General Sir John McCall served in Afghanistan at the highest levels, including as the UK's special envoy to the country. Back in 2001-2002, I commanded the first deployment of the uh, of ISAF, um, and so that took me into uh, 2002. Um, and then in 2005, I, I was the Prime Minister Special Envoy to President Karzai. And then latterly, in, in my role as the Deputy Supreme um, Allied Commander in Europe, I was responsible for force generation for NATO. And in that space, I would visit NATO, uh, visit NATO forces in Afghanistan. But now, in a highly critical interview, he says ministers have let those Afghans down who worked tirelessly alongside the British forces because many of them remain there under constant threat from the Taliban. These individuals risked their lives over many, many years, fought alongside us, in many cases saved the lives of our service men and women. And we undertook to look after them, to relocate them and reintegrate them into our society. And there are many people who have been in hiding in Kabul since August, September last year. Their applications have been lost. They've had to reapply. I know families have had to reapply three times. Uh, they've fled from, um, from one safe house to another, in one case five, five houses. Some might argue that the government at the moment is going through a very challenging time. There's a war in Ukraine. We've just come off the back of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the challenges are immense. And in some cases, some civil servants have said problematic. And that could be why there are delays and problems. What would you say to that? We should understand the commitment that we've given to the Afghans, understand the implications of not looking after uh, the Afghans that remain in Afghanistan and remain vulnerable. And we have got to allocate the priorities required to look after them. It, it, when politicians say, um, there aren't the resources available. What they mean is we're not allocating the priority to it. When you reflect on that time and you think back mm. to when this was happening and yeah. look at what's happening now. Mm. What, what was the one sense of feeling at that time was optimism, huge optimism. Um, huge progress made. Um, and I just hope that in the fullness of time, um, the tremendous work that went on since the signing of that agreement does result in a better life for the people of, of Afghanistan. How do you think the government should be feeling about what is happening in Afghanistan at the moment? Well, the government, ministers, have said uh, that they will honour our commitment to look after those who fought alongside us and who are now at risk as a consequence of doing it with their families, and they have not done so. And that is something which they should feel deeply, deeply ashamed, as, as I do. In a statement, the Ministry of Defence said, this government made a promise to help at-risk Afghans safely reach the UK, and we are delivering on that promise. During op pitting, we evacuated 15,000 people from Kabul, and out of the 311 people who unfortunately could not get on a flight, 248 are now safely in the UK, or a third country. Since the Arab scheme began, we have relocated over 9,000 applicants and their dependents to the UK. This scheme remains open and is not time limited. Do you think the British government was guilty of overcommitting, of overpromising those Afghans a place to go after this was all over? No, I don't. I think it was exactly the right thing to do. It was the honourable thing to do. What they've been guilty of is not putting a system in place which is adequate um, and efficient in dealing with the, the, the process of the applications as they come through. Um, and frankly, they should be able to put that in place. There is absolutely no reason why it can't be in place. What do you think needs to happen next? What are you calling for? What I would like to see is a quick uh, analysis, ideally, ideally through the House of Commons Defence Committee, of the whole Arab process to understand what's wrong with it and to get it put right as quickly as possible. So if you had 10 minutes with the Prime Minister, what would you say? Well, ultimately, it is a political responsibility to make sure that we have the systems in place to fulfil the promises that have, been, that have been made by politicians. So ultimately, it is a political responsibility. I'd say, we made a commitment, you made a commitment, you're not delivering on it, put a system in place that does deliver on it.